this is Blender um, number a demo number eight uh, intro to animation so we have a pre-made scene uh, you can see it's pretty simple I got a sphere that I'm using as a ball I have this ground plane uh, right here which um, currently I've walked along with the lights and at this point if I go to render this I'm not really happy with uh, how it's actually rendering you can see the framings off and those types of things what we're really interested in is making sure that the curve is right so what I'd like to have what I do and you can switch between the two but I'd like to actually make the camera orthographic rather than perspective so I'm gonna hit the um, the O on the, the number pad and go to the side view and switch over to orthographic for the camera and you can see everything disappears and that's because you zoom in and out with the orthographic camera using the scale so I'll knock that up to probably around 20 you might want to do a little higher but now when I go to render this out and look at it I'm rendering it from the side and you can see how it kind of looks and it frames and it works better and that's why I have the big box on the side because you can see in order to get everything else to show up I have this box that's being illuminated so this is more for setup now the other thing we want to do is when we look at the render size right now this is going to render at 1920 by 1080 uh, so this is your high definition 100% um, what we want to do just to make our file smaller is we're going to drop that down to 25% the other thing we're going to do is right now this is set to 24 frames a second which is what you do for film we want to change that to custom and we want to change it to 15 frames a second and that'll help us with those types of things and then the final thing we want to do is at this point if I even if I just do this as a still I'm going to do render animation you can see that's the option right below it and if we do render animation okay we're getting our renderings to take place you can see the different frames going through and I'm just going to stop this and the question is is where was this saved so I'm in the, the render properties window and if I scroll down you'll see that there's an output option and right now it's default to the PNG and if I hit this folder it basically rendered out a sequence of PNG files um, if you're working on a team or you're using render farm or if you have other software it's actually handy and helpful to have uh, different uh, images and all separate but uh, we're not, we don't want to do that we're just going to bundle everything together so what we need to do is change so where it says PNG click that and we can look at some different options and you'll see here some movie options um, we're going to use the H264 it's uh, one of the cleaner newer um, compression options and in addition to that that's basically the compression option and H264 is kind of like a um, a subclass of the MPEG-4 compression. Now the other thing is looking at the actual encoding and how the file is going to be saved. So it's using an H.264 codex, which is the compression. However, the format is an AVI, .avi file, and I would like to switch it over to a QuickTime. So now we have a QuickTime that's a H.264 compression. It is going to be uh, 15 frames a second and it's going to be one quarter the size of a standard high definition and then the other thing is is to also change where it's being saved I'm just going to go to the desktop and save it in the same folder that I have the demo files in so um, animation accept and the other thing is if I go to render this right now it's going to render from 1 to 250 you'll see that the number is the same right here so you can change it in either way let's knock this down to maybe 100 and let's just render the animation and see what happens so it's going through and rendering everything going relatively quickly and then when it's all done it's going to keep on going through it'll uh, basically save all these as temporary files uh, is what it's working through and even though this is an AVI it won't be able to read it until it actually renders out all the files and, and, and finishes it off and you'll see what it does is it automatically tells you the frame range that's just kind of a standard blender default so we'll double click the animation and open it up in quick time 
and play it and we get our basic animation and if I go to window show uh, movie inspector you'll see I have an H264 480 by 270 15 frames a second so all the basically the format and settings are correct um, okay and we'll go back and look at that um, again down the road so now we're actually ready to look at more um, uh, particulars as far as the actual animation so I'll go ahead and select the ball and down at the bottom here we have a timeline and you'll notice that if I hold down the left mouse button and move this green line this is called the scrubber and notice how the number changes when I do this so if I hold this down it increases and these are the frames that are basically showing up um, if I hit play at this point it'll basically go through a little cycle and you'll see it's saying 15 frames a second now the one thing to be aware of is it's showing up 15 frames but what happens is by default it's going to run it uh, at basically it's going to try to run it at the defined um, speed but that's not guaranteed so where it says no sync I'd, I'd like you to change it over to frame dropping and what that's going to do is it's always going to pray at 15 frames a second regardless and if for some reason it can't render that quick it'll actually drop frames and it'll skip ahead so that you can see the actual motion. If you use um, no sync, what will happen is if you have a really big file, it's going to lag and it'll look, the speed will be completely different when you actually play it in the screen and when you actually render it out. So that's why the frame dropping basically in other programs is called a real time um, animation um, is what's happening. So let's go back to the very first frame zero and we're going to add a key and the keys are basically defining the position so I have the ball selected do object animation insert keyframe and when it does it's going to ask you for all these other um, items the only one we want um, is basically location so and at this point you can see that this is now orange also if we go and we open up our numeric properties you'll see that this is now active um, so now we're going to move the scrubber to 20 and at this point it's green it's saying there's a keyframe somewhere but you can see right now that the key is somewhere else and at 20 we're going to move this up and let's move it up to let's do 5 okay and we're going to do the same thing again object animation insert key location you'll see the shortcut is i so you could also hit i and now we have these two frames so we're down here up at 20 we're up here let's go to 40 and then at 40, I'm just going to set Z to 1. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Object, animation, insert keyframe, and location. So now if I go to play this, um, it's going to go all the way to 100. So let's change it and shorten this all the way down to 40. And now when I go to play this, what will happen is it will automatically loop. And we can use that to kind of get an idea for the bounce. Now the thing you can see with the bounce right now is it's really, really slow. It's more like a machine than an actual ball. And that's because it's taking 40 uh, frames, which is almost three seconds to go up and down. Um, so if we want to see uh, this, how this goes faster, the one quick technique you can use is there's a thing called Time Remapper. This is in the, the render properties. And right now I can say, well, the current frame is 100. And instead of doing 100, I want the new one to be 50. And what that's going to do is it's going to play it twice as fast. So now if I go to play this animation and we'll let it go back, and now you can see it kind of bounces and it looks a little bit more realistic. The problem with this is it doesn't relocate any of the keys. It just basically changes the way that it's, it's being rendered out um, visually. So what we can do is we don't want to actually use this. What we need to do is find another way that we can actually modify and change this. And the way we do that is we basically go into the, um, the uh, graph editor. Now the graph editor is the standard, every 3D program has one. And let me actually close this out, we don't need that anymore. Um, so we'll go to the graph editor and if we look, this is what we created when we were doing this animation. And then if we open up location, you'll see we have X, Y, and Z that we defined. And you notice that the Y and the X have keys, but there's basically no location. So we don't need those. And that's because when you create location, it creates it for the X, Y, and the Z. Um, you can't just do it for one. 
So I'm going to hide the Y, hide the X, and we'll just keep the Z for the time being, and we'll kind of look and work at this. Now you can use the middle mouse button and scroll out. If you hit A, you can select everything, and you can go View, and you can do View Selected, and it'll reframe it. Um, also, if you uh, hold down the Control key and use the middle mouse button, you can scale it in the different directions, which is kind of helpful because sometimes you might want notice that you want to be wider or skinnier. And this is just kind of standard with, with animation. So these exactly coincide with what's shown right here. Um, and at this point, if I want to make this um, quicker, if I select the whole thing, I can literally do what we normally do of hitting S for scale. And then, so now I can scale, and I'm going to hit X, uh, S for scale, and then X immediately. And you can see now I can actually increase, and if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, you can actually see a scale value. If I hold down control, it adds snapping, and now I can scale it exactly on the X axis uh, 0.5, which basically will make it twice as quick. So now that's done, and then I can hit G for grab, and move this over and hold down constraint and now I have this relocated so now this animation is 20 frames instead of and you can see now we have it slightly different now there's still a line here and that's because the X and the Y which we have hidden still have the longer length because I didn't scale those um, so I could have done all of them but like I said we're not going to use those actually the Y um, you can get rid of because that's basically back in space in this program. So let's just border select that. Uh, hit X, and now they're gone. Um, and now you can see we don't even have them in the list. And then the, the actual X ones will come back, and we'll look at those later once we're done with everything else. So um, let's do another view. View selected, there we go. OK, so uh, now that we have this to 20, let's actually knock this down preview even shorter, go to 20. And let's play it now. I kind of have I widened the curve editor, and I've lost those controls. If I hold down the middle mouse, mouse button over a blank space in the timeline, I can do this, and I can get my little control, my little scrubber, and watch that going up and down, and kind of get an idea of what's happening. Um, now, the one thing we're getting right now at this point is it's kind of going, and it's actually speeding up a little and then it's going at a rate and it's slowing down. So what we want to do is we want to change the curve on this. So the way that you do this is if we go into key, there's a thing called interpolation mode, and let's switch it to linear. And if you look at linear, if you look what it's happening is rather than speeding up and slowing down, it's working like a machine that's going up and then it's going down. And it's very consistent. And what's happening is gravity isn't influenced at all. There's also another one which you usually only use for animating the camera around the scene. Um, there's one that's called uh, constant, and if you look at that one, it pops from one to the other because um, we only have two positions that we've actually defined. Um, so we need to go back to the, the Bezier, but we need to change it in some way to get it to be modified. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to select the um, handle, and I'm just going to hit G for grab. And I'm going to change this and change basically the shape and grab on this as well and pull this up. And you want to make these ideally um, the same size because the idea is the gravity, the influence of the gravity is the same going up and down. And generally you don't need to uh, do this top one. Um, if you increase it, that's for the hang time. But now if we actually go to play this, you'll see there's actually a spring that goes on, so it goes down and then it pops back up. And it kind of depends on what type of ball and how springy it is. Um, to decrease the springiness, if you pull this in, or if you um, decrease it, you have different options that will influence basically what that curve looks like. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. And you never put this inside because what's actually happening is it's slowing down and speeding up. And generally, you want to avoid putting it dead vertical. Um, also, it'll overlap once you get multiple bounces, and it gets a little tricky. So um, I usually put it slightly in, and then this one will position and get the same. OK, so uh, we have a single bounce. And now let's uh, look at how we actually go about make, creating more of a bounce. So I'm going to do um, A to select everything. And just like in uh, other parts of the program, you can do a copy. 
and then you can do a paste. And now what I did with the paste is I pasted it where the scrub 